right, welcome back from winter break. We are moving on in unit seven. Today we're talking about probability. This is notes number four. At the top, we're just gonna do a basic review of what probability is. Let's say we roll a fair number cube, a die, and we're gonna find the probability of each of the following. Remember that on a fair number cube, there are six possibilities, numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. So what's the probability of getting a two? There's one way that you can get a two out of six ways total, so your probability is one six. Uh, for part B, the probability of getting an even number, we need to think of how many even numbers there are. There's the number two, four, and six, so there's three successes. So three out of the six total, or one half. So our probability of getting an even number is one half. Probability of getting a prime number, think of what the prime numbers are. Prime numbers from one to six are two, three, and five. And so there's three of them. Three successes. Three successes out of six total is the same thing as one half. So basic probability, looking at the number of successes that you have out of the number of total outcomes. Now, let's say we're gonna roll the number cube twice. We're gonna roll it twice. So find the probability of each of the following. Probability of getting two fours. Probability of getting a four the first time is one out of six. That's the first time we roll the die. Then we pick the die up and we roll it again. And again, the probability of getting a four is one out of six. So that's the first roll. This is the second roll. And to find the probability of both of those happening together, I'm going to multiply. One six times one six is the same thing as one out of 36. The probability of getting a two and then a three. If I'm gonna get a two, that means my probability is one out of six. A three is also one out of six. So one six times one six, one out of 36. Okay. Probability of rolling a one and then any number, then we don't care what the second number is. So if we roll a one, that probability is gonna be one out of six. But the second time when we roll uh, the die, we don't care what the number is, we're looking for any number. So there's six successes out of the six outcomes because any one of those will work. One six times six, six is six out of 36. Reducing that, we get one sixth. So there's our probability. And like I said, probability is known as the number of successful outcomes divided by the number of total possible outcomes. So the notation right here, probability of rolling a four, there's one success and there's six possibilities. So it's a one out of six, okay? And this is just an example for you. Now, we, there's a concept of independent and dependent events here. We have to determine, are, are, are events going to be independent of each other or are they dependent of each other? Independent events are events that have no impact on each other. The result of one event has no impact on the result of the other. So for example, rolling a die and drawing a card from a standard deck. When I roll a die, and pull a card from a deck of cards, they don't have anything to do with each other. One is not affecting the other. That's what makes them independent. Dependent events, however, now the result of the first impacts the result of the second. So for example, drawing an ace, then drawing a four from a standard deck without replacement. If I'm gonna draw an ace out of a standard deck, I have four aces out of 52 cards total but without replacement, meaning I don't put that back, now I only have 51 cards left. It changed my probability. I'm trying to draw a four, there's four fours, but my probability changed from one to the next because I didn't put that card back. That makes it dependent. So we have to determine, are they going to be independent or are they going to be dependent? Let's just do some examples of identifying these. In the first one, it says choosing the color and size of a pair of shoes. If I choose the color and size of a pair of shoes, does the color have to do with the size? No, 
if I choose a color that has nothing to do with what size that is. So this is going to be independent. Okay. If I look at number two, choosing the winner and the runner up at a dog show, when I choose the winner out of a, the group of dogs, that dog is now done. So I have a lesser number of options to choose the runner up. That changes my probability, meaning these are dependent. Because after I choose the winner, now I have a different number of dogs for the runner up. In number three, Choosing a president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer for student council, assuming that everyone can only have one job. Again, I have a group of people. I'm going to pick the president. Once I pick the president, now my group of people that are left has changed because there's one less person. Then I'm going to pick the vice president. Then it's going to change again. Then I'm going to pick the secretary. changes again. So one event is affecting the other. This is also dependent. I want you to pause the video at this point and see if you can decide about number four. In number four, you're going to select a fiction book and a nonfiction book from the library. You determine, is that independent or dependent? If we move on and look at calculating some probability examples, number five. At a picnic, Coolio reaches into the ice-filled cooler. He's got eight regular soft drinks and five diet soft drinks. He's going to put the drink back because he decides he doesn't want it. And then somebody else is going to come to the cooler and pick out a soda. Okay, now the key phrase in here is he puts it back. So if he pulls out a can and puts it back into the cooler, the probability has not changed. The number of cans that are in the cooler has remained the same. This is independent. These two things have not affected each other. Now to calculate this probability, I need to first look at how many total drinks do I have? Eight plus five. Okay, so 13 total cans. And then I need to look at my successes. We want a regular, regular soft drink. And there's eight of those. So for Julio, the first person, he has an eight out of 13 chance of picking out a regular soft drink. He's gonna look at the can, put it back in the cooler, someone else walks up, they also have an 8 out of 13 chance of picking out a regular soft drink because the can was put back. So if I take these two and I multiply them together, that means I end up with 64 out of 169. Or you can write this as a decimal. Typically we want to round these out to the third decimal place, so that would be 0.379 in this case. There's your probability. Let's look at number six. Now we're pulling three cards from a deck without replacement. Find the probability of drawing a heart, another heart, and a spade in that order. Well, one good thing to know is how many are there of each type. There's 52 cards total, and there's 13 of each type. So there's 13 hearts, there's 13 clubs. I can't draw a club, I'll be honest. There's 13 diamonds, and there's 13 spades. Hmm, this one I could try. Ooh, there we go. All right, so that's the standard deck of cards that we're working with, just in case you are not familiar with that. Now, key phrase in this question, without replacement, meaning I'm pulling out a card and I'm not putting it back. Okay, I'm pulling out a card and I'm not putting it back. So I'm trying to draw a heart, another heart, and a spade in that order. For the first one, I have 13 hearts out of 52 cards. Now, if I don't put that back, how many cards are left in the deck? Only 51. So there's only 51 cards left in the deck, and I've already pulled out a heart. So now there's only 12 hearts left. And then I don't put the second card back, so now there's only 50. And I'm looking for spades, which there's 13 still, because I haven't touched the spades yet. These are events that are affecting each other. These are dependent. Now let's just review fractions here for a second. When I am multiplying fractions, I want to go straight across the top 
and straight across the bottom and then divide at the end. Okay, so 13 times 12 times 13 is 2,028. Oh, let's change that color. And 52 times 51 times 50 is 132,600. I can turn that into a decimal. Again, I'm going to round to this, the nearest um, thousandth. So that's 0 0.015 for my probability. Okay. I want you to pause the video for a second and see if you can try number seven, looking at the chocolate bars. So see if you can answer the question in number seven. For number eight, now we're looking at a lottery game that has three cages with ten numbered balls in them. So we need to figure out the probability of um, the first two being even and the third one being prime. Okay, the first two being even and the third one being prime. So the first thing I need to know is what are the prime numbers? Prime numbers from zero to nine are two, three, five, and seven. Okay. The other thing I need to consider is what are the numbers that are even. Now, normally zero doesn't fit into either category, but in this case, we're going to call zero an even number because if it has to be either even or odd, we're going to put it in the even category. So we've got zero, two, four, six, and eight, five even numbers there. Okay. So there's three cages and the balls in each cage are all separate. So if I take one out of the first cage, I don't, ex I don't change the probability of the second cage. Therefore, these events are going to be independent of each other. One is not affecting the other. So the first one being even, that's going to be a 5 out of 10 chance. The second one being even, that's also going to be a 5 out of 10 chance. And the third one being prime, there's 1, 2, 3, 4 prime numbers, that's 4 out of 10. So I multiply those all out, and my decimal becomes 0 0.1. Okay. One last question that we're going to do together, number nine, find the probability of drawing three cards of the same suit without replacement, without replacement, meaning we are not putting the cards back. Again, you can already determine if you're not putting the cards back, then the second time you pick a card, it's going to be different. So these are going to be dependent. And we are trying to pick out three cards of the same suit. Now, remember before, there's 13 cards in each suit. There's 52 total. So if I look at my three cards, there's a 13 out of 52 chance that I get one from one suit. I want the same suit, but now there's only 12 left out of the 51 cards total because I kept the first one out. Then there's only 11 left out of the 50 total because I kept the second one out. So again, these are dependent, they're affecting each other. So multiply those all out, and I get a probability of 0 0.013. And again, you can check these on your calculator, make sure you're getting the right answer here, um, and go from there. I want you to pause the video and look at number 10 on your own, see if you can answer that question. And when you are finished, don't forget to go take the quiz. Hop onto Schoology and go back and take the quiz. Thanks and have a great night.